welcome to the third module of fire and explosion. So up till now uh, we have studied in uh, different modules about the fire and explosion, different type of fuels, what are the different kind of modes of heat transfer through which fire can propagate. We have discussed about the fire triangle and different flammability characteristics. Now in this uh, particular module we will study about the explosion and its character classification, vapor cloud explosion. So explosion, it is an extremely dangerous thing and uh, there are so many accidents they are attributed to because of uh, explosion. In history, in the chemical engineering history, there are two major accidents. Uh, one is the Flix Pro, another one is the Jaipur accident. They took place in uh, just because of uh, explosion. So question arises uh, that uh, what is an explosion? This is the basic definition of uh, explosion. This is a rapid burning of a material resulting in sudden built up and a release of heat and gas pressure. In other words, it is a sudden and violent release of uh, energy. The violence of explosion depends on the rate at which the energy is released. So sometimes the fire may lead to explosion and sometimes it may not. When the fire is leading towards an explosion, then the conditions are extremely dangerous. The, this is the second of the major hazard is explosion. The explosion in, in the process industries causes fewer serious accidents than fire, but more than toxic release. So when it is, does occur, however, it often inflicts greater loss of life and uh, damage than fire because sometimes the one, one additional thing in the explosion is that the generation of shock waves. This can match us with the natural frequency of nearby building and all those buildings may get extremely uh, damaged. So explosion is usually regarded as having a disaster potential greater than that of fire but less than that of toxic. So in other modules we will discuss uh, in, uh, the different case studies. You can see the toxic accident that is attributed to uh, Bhopal is dangerous compared to the, the um, Jaipur accident or a Flex Pro accident. Now fire and explosion uh, may be a, you can say the two sides of uh, the same coin where both are based on strongly exothermic uh, chemical reactions usually the combustion in air. So an explosion as opposed to a fire when the rapid expansion of gases produces the higher pressure and these higher pressure through rapid propagation may result the explosion and may cause the generation of shock waves which are again devastating. So an explosion is more likely when the fuel oxygen mixture is midway between the flammability limit because in that particular case the fuel oxygen mixture is, may escape to the atmosphere and it won't be, uh, you won't be able to control it in which direction because uh, usually it propagates towards the direction of wind inversion. So you won't be able to apply all your safety measures to that uncontrolled escape of this vapor cloud. The major distinction when we talk about the distinction between the fire and explosion, the major distinction between fire and explosion is the rate of energy released. Fire releases energy slowly whereas explosion releases rapidly typically on the order of uh, microseconds. So in a very small time duration you can experience the sudden release of extreme amount of energy. So fire can also result from explosion and explosion can result from fire. So that is why we have said that more or less these are the two sides of a coin. A uh, good example of how the energy release rate affects, affects the consequences of an accident is a standard automobile tire. Okay, you may experience that uh, when burst. The compressed air within the tire contains a huge quantum of energy and if energy is released slowly through the nozzle, the tire is harmlessly deflated. And if tire ruptures suddenly, then all energy within the compressed tire releases uh, rapidly and the result is a dangerous explosion. And you sometimes you may experience the um, large noise 
as well as uh, all of a sudden then uh, you can see the dust and uh, other dust particles they are escaping when when mm, this uh, tire ruptures so this is the difference between the fi uh, fire and explosions you can extrapolate the things in terms of fire and explosion uh, in just uh, the fire is the exothermic oxidation with the flame explosion uh, the higher energy release rate pressure or a shock wave and these may trigger each other the usual effect uh, effects are injuries casualties property losses uh, process interruption this may be because of thermal radiation toxic products blast fragments etc so required knowledge for prevention material properties obviously the nature of fire and explosion process procedure to reduce the hazard so you must know that what kind of uh, um, uh, fire is there and how it propagates what kind of explosion is there how it can propagate so so when we deal with the, the method of extinguishment then um, we must know the uh, the either of uh, three methods how to cool the burning material how to exclude the oxygen how to remove the fuel and how to bring uh, break the chemical reactions now coming back to explosion usually uh, when we talk about because we have discussed a lot about the fire so when we talk about the explosion the explosion behavior depends on large number of parameters and we have enlisted all uh, the parameters uh, number one is the, the ambient temperature and pressure so you must know that what is the ambient temperature and pressure in the previous uh, uh, module we have discussed the effect of temperature and pressure on lfl and ufl so if you are having the adequate knowledge so in case of any eventuality you can avoid the further accidents you must know the composition and the physical properties of explosive materials for this you must know that what is the importance of msds uh, so you cannot treat the the all hydrocarbons or all combustible materials in a single platform so you must know that what will be the delta h of each and every one nature of ignition sources type energy duration this is again important in the previous model we have discussed about the the ignition sources so which kind of uh, source of ignition may be present in uh, the workplace in case of uh, any problem how much um, energy is being there and what would be the duration millisecond seconds etc and sometimes uh, um, uh, you may experience that if you go to the pump petrol pump station then it is uh, uh, it is advisable not to use your mobile phones it is advisable not to lit your uh, cigarettes etc it is uh, always advisable to be very careful in that uh, particular zone because sometimes the little spark being generated from the mobile phone may be extremely harmful and again one more advisory is that uh, if you are working in a kitchen and some by any means uh, lpg releases then it is always advisable not to turn off or turn on any kind of electrical switches whether it is a ventilation switch or the electrical switch the reason is that the small the small spark may be extremely dangerous then you must know that geometry of surrounding if it is confined or unconfined remember the confined geometry is uh, somehow favorable the reason is that whenever you are working suppose i am working in a pool of hexane i know that uh, hexane is uh, flammable it may create a problem it may form a flammable mixture so my uh, outside environment is extremely uh, safe by the use of uh, safety devices so i am very much aware about what kind of safety devices are there now by any means by the generation of excessive pressure by the generation of uh, any means uh, there is hexane vapors they escape to the atmosphere and because of the wind is inversion because of the wind velocity it may go to some other places adequate quantity of uh, oxygen is available through air so it may form the combustible mixture and you don't have any clue about that what kind of difference uh, different sources of ignition be there sometimes uh, somebody uh, starts his his, uh, his car sometimes uh, somebody start his scooter or maybe using the 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 mobile phone 
then definitely the adequate source of ignition they are available. So, you must know about the importance of uh, geometry of uh, surrounding. You must have, um, must have a knowledge about the amount of combustible mixture. Suppose I am working over here with the pool of hexane and say 1000 uh, kiloliter of hexane is there. Then how much quantity of uh, hexane is escaped to the atmosphere so that I can uh, devise or, or I can actuate my uh, safety devices accordingly. Turbulence of combustion uh, bill material, again it is equally important that uh, how much quantity of air mixed with this combustible material. You must know about or you must analyze uh, uh, the time before ignition. No. The reason is that uh, it gives you enough idea so that you can anticipate that uh, how much dilution is present how your uh, uh, combustible re released combustible material is diluted because of the presence of atmospheric air. The reason is that uh, again uh, LFL and UFL comes into the picture. If adequate oxygen is there then definitely they will form the combustion. But if more than required oxygen is there then definitely the mixture will be too lean to catch fire. Right. So, Suppose again I am working in this uh, re with a reactor with a hexane or LPG or uh, any combustible material. Because of uh, uh, some, some thermal runaway reaction, the uh, combustible material releases to the atmosphere. It, at this particular point of time, it may not catch the fire, but where it goes, at that particular point of time, it may catch fire. So, you must know that rate at which the combustible is released. So, all these 8 parameters they are extremely important to discuss the or to analyze the combustible behavior. Now, why we are discussing this combustible behavior a priori? The reason is that whenever any kind of fire took place, then definitely we must analyze or we must perform the accidental investigation in these lines. Now, remember one thing before we, we, we go ahead that explosion behavior is very difficult to characterize and simultaneously the explosion behavior is still not completely understood. So, these two things must be, uh, uh, you must aware about these two things. Now, before we go ahead with the explosion, uh, the question arises, uh, are we in a position to classify the explosion? Yes we can classify the, the um, explosion. So, explosion in the process industry can be classified in uh, several ways, physical explosion, chemical explosion, vapor cloud explosion, boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion, believe me, confined explosion may or may not uh, uh, followed by the reaction, unconfined explosion, dust explosion, propagating reactions, uniform reactions, thermal explosions detonation and deflagration. So, we will take up uh, one by one. Uh, the physical explosion, this may be just attributed to the mechanical failure of uh, pressure system, over pressure of a pressure system, under pressure of pressure system, over temperature of a pressure system and under temperature of pressure system. So, the chemical reactions they do play a very vital role because the pressure and temperature both are integral part of any chemical reaction. Then chemical explosion, a chemical reaction or a, a situation that causes a sudden almost instantaneous release of pressure, gas, heat or light when subjected to sudden shock, high temperature or applied potential. This may be attributed to the ammonium nitrate, organic peroxide, sodium chlorate, etc. So, you must know that what is the efficacy of these chemical explosions. The vapor cloud explosion, very common and extremely important. The explosion resulting from the ignition of a cloud, flammable vapor, uh, cloud of flammable vapor, gas or mist in which flame speeds uh, accelerate to sufficiently high velocity to produce significant over pressure. This is extremely dangerous, a lot of accidents took place in history, those who are attributed to vapor cloud explosion. Then boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion, believe me, 
A boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion is an explosion caused by the rupture of a vessel containing a pressurized liquid that has reached a temperature above its boiling point. We will discuss this uh, in subsequent slides. Uh, the confined explosion may or may not uh, with the reaction, a confined explosion occurs in a confined space such as vessel or a building. Remember, every time whenever we are anticipating the, com the chance of any confined explosion, the, we always uh, equipped with the, the various safety devices. So, this explosion involves the vapor combustion, reactor explosion, other explosion involving the liquid phase reactions, etc. Uh, another classification is attributed to the unconfined explosion. Now, these explosions occur in open and these type of explosion is usually a result of a flammable gas spill, maybe through the pressurized or unpressurized vessel. The gas is dispersed and mixed with air until it comes in contact with the source of ignition. These explosions are extremely destructive in nature because large quantity of gas and large areas are uh, frequently involved and practically you, you are handicapped with the non-availability of your safety devices in those areas where it blown up. Next is your uh, dust explosion. Dust explosion um, is a swift combustion of fine particles suspended in air within an enclosed location. Now, dust explosion can occur where any dispersed powder combustible material is present in high enough concentrations in atmosphere or other oxidizing gaseous medium such as pure oxygen. So, again it is very important and again there are so many accidents in history they took place just because of this dust explosion. Next is the propagating reactions, they start at a point and propagate as a front through the mass of a reactant. Sometimes explosion may attributed to the uniform reactions, the uniform reactions occur more or less uniformly throughout the mass of reactants. The thermal explosions they are results from the exothermic reactions under confinement with inadequate dissipation of heat. The detonation, this is again very destructive and very important. An explosion uh, in which the reaction front moves at a speed greater than the speed of sound in the unreacted medium, a very high, uh, a highly turbulent combustion, very high flame speed and extremely high pressure. Sometimes it is more than more than 10 bars. And uh, uh, there are so many accidents in the history, they are uh, uh, involved with uh, multiple classes of explosion like uh, vapor uh, cloud explosion led to the detonation, sometimes BV led to the detonation. The last in this uh, uh, class is the deflagration. An explosion in which the reaction front moves at a speed less than the speed of sound in the unreacted medium. In detonation, it, uh, uh, the reaction front moves at a speed more than the sound of a speed in the unreacted medium. The combustion with the flame speed at non-turbulent velocities of uh, maybe say 0.5 to 1 meter per second. Pressure rise by heat balance in uh, fixed volume with a pressure ratio of uh, about uh, 10. Deflagrations, they are easier to control than detonation. Usually by example, examples are adding water to the burning hydrocarbon such as oil or wax produces a deflagration. Now, in subsequent uh, slides uh, or subsequent modules, uh, we will discuss uh, three special cases or three special classification streams. One is uh, vapor cloud explosion. This result of release of flammable material in the atmosphere, a subsequent dispersion phase and after some delay and ignition of the vapor cloud. We will discuss uh, these, uh, these cases in detail. The boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion, Blevy, the explosion caused by the rupture of a vessel containing a pressurized liquid that has reached a temperature above its uh, boiling point. We will discuss this one. And third one is uh, the dust explosion. So, we will discuss three special classification 
uh, among uh, uh, all 12 classification streams, so we will discuss all these three. Now, vapor cloud explosion, this is one of the most dangerous and uh, destructive explosion in chemical process industries. Uh, these explosion occur by a sequence of uh, a step. Just try to, uh, to understand these sequences. There is a sudden release of uh, a large quantity of uh, flammable vapors. Suppose I am working in the pool of uh, um, hexane, this is the closed pool of uh, hexane. And uh, we know that uh, the, um, the boiling point of hexane is around from 65 to 70 degrees Celsius based on the, the purity of our material. So, uh, uh, I am working say around at 110 or 125 degrees Celsius, it is a closed vessel, a pressurized vessel. So, sudden release of a large quantity of flammable vapor may be in the terms of hexane. Typically, this occurs when a vessel containing the superheated and a pressurized liquid, it ruptures. Then dispersion of vapor throughout the plant side, um, site while mixing with air. So, this uh, pool of uh, hexane uh, by any means may be through safety wall, may be because of uh, some crack in uh, um, the pressure, pressure vessel, it dispersed to the atmosphere. Where it forms, uh, with, uh, where it comes into contact with the atmospheric oxygen and forms the flammable mixture. And the third step is the ignition run with the ignition of the resulting vapor cloud, maybe by any chance, maybe because of the spark generated through the shoe nails, maybe the dry hair, maybe the silky cloths, etc. The, the combustible mixture ignites because the, the, the sources of ignitions are N. So, ignition of these resulting vapor cloud. So, this is a three step process. We will take up a case study. Uh, of a flex bro, which uh, took place under the class of uh, uh, vapor cloud explosion. Now, VCs or vapor cloud explosions, they are increasing in number uh, due to the increase in inventories of uh, flammable vape material in the process plant and operations at most severe or more severe conditions. So, they are increasing day by day. Now, uh, so thereby uh, the importance of uh, safety devices are also increasing day by day. So, any process containing quantities of liquefied gases, volatile superheated liquid or high pressure gases considered a very good candidate for vapor cloud explosion. Now, VCEs, uh, they are difficult to characterize primarily due to the large number of parameters needed to describe an event. Now, accident under uh, uncontrolled circumstances, they are also attributed to the vapor cloud explosion. So, uh, in uh, we have discussed that uh, there are large number of uh, parameters, they are attributed to the vapor cloud explosion. Now, we, we, we can have a look that what are the different parameters those affect vapor cloud explosion behavior. Number one is that uh, how much quantity of the material released. Suppose uh, I am here uh, with uh, working with the pressure vessel having the, the, the amount of hexane say 100 kiloliter and almost 500 kiloliter is escaped. So, you must know that uh, how much quantity of the material released, what of the fraction of the material is vaporized because the uh, only vaporized material can participate in uh, fire or ignition or it can form the combustible mixture. But simultaneously, whenever it ignites, it produces sufficient quantity of uh, material to form uh, the additional vapors which are not being vaporized. Then what is the probability of ignition of the cloud which is being escaped from the, your workplace? Then distance travelled by the cloud prior to ignition. The reason is that how much time is given to the cloud for the dilution or for the dispersion or for the formation. Because if it escapes from this particular point where I am working, the concentration would be on the higher side, the concentration of hexane would be on the higher side. So, probably it may be beyond UFL. So, when it is it, 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 uh, it, uh, it released to the atmosphere, then 
at what particular point of time or a distance it matches the range of LFL and UFL. And simultaneously it is again required to know that how much time it would take to neutralize the effect of LFL and UFL range because if it is too diluted or the concentration of the fuel is very less then definitely it, it will not be uh, ignite whatsoever the source of ignition is there. So, you must know the distance travelled by the cloud prior to ignition and a time delay before ignition of the, the cloud. So, that you can analyze that uh, what is the gravity. Again, there are other parameters like density, etcetera, they are uh, um, again very crucial. Then probability of explosion rather than fire because uh, uh, the fire may lead to explosion and explosion may lead to fire. Then existence of uh, threshold quantity of the material. Again, this is attributed to the LFL and UFL. Then what is the efficiency of the explosion? See, if it is extremely pressurized vessel, then uh, the, the explosion may lead to the formation of uh, uh, shock waves, nearby building may get collapsed and if these nearby building or establishments they do have the storage of uh, um, this uh, uh, flammable material, then again uh, the problem will be more destructive. The same happened at the Jaipur accident. Then location of ignition source with respect to the release, you must know that at what location uh, was there for that uh, source of ignition. See why I am telling you this, suppose by any means it releases and it goes to say 100 meter apart or 200 meter apart. Remember, this particular zone is filled with your all kind of safety devices, but 100 meter or 200 meter apart, you won't find any safety devices. And somebody by any chance, because they do not know that what kind of scenario is, by any chance they start their car. So, the source of ignition is there, flammable mixture is there, there may be a chance that uh, the, the cloud may catch as fire. So, you must know that what is the location of the ignition source. Now, ignition probability increases as the size of vapor cloud increases because if it is on the larger side then definitely um, it is very difficult to eliminate the source of ignition at that particular point. Now, vapor cloud fires are more common than the explosion. Obviously, the explosion efficiency is usually small and the turbulent mix mixing of vapor and air and ignition of the cloud at a point remote from the release increases the impact of the explosion. A large cloud of combustible material is very dangerous and almost impossible to control and the same happened in Jaipur accident. Now, uh, we, uh, we can discuss uh, that uh, various methods through which uh, we can use to prevent the vapor cloud uh, explosion and uh, these includes the keeping low inventories of uh, volatile flammable materials. Obviously, it is always uh, advisable that you reduce your warehouse and you reduce uh, the number of uh, volatile and you use only up to a certain uh, limit. In FlixPro, they stored a huge quantum of flammable material in their uh, establishment. So, you keep low inventories, this not only uh, 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 reduces uh, your uh, uh, safety problem, but also reduces uh, the economics burden, economic burden involved in warehousing. Using process conditions which minimize uh, flashing if uh, a vessel or pipeline is ruptured recall the industri industrial hygiene where we, uh, we discussed uh, a lot uh, in, uh, in such an aspect. Y using analyzers to detect leak at a very low concentration though it is very costly, but again um, for the safety of your plant um, it is always advisable. Installing automated block uh, walls uh, to shut, down, shut the system down while the spill is in the, the incipient stage of uh, development uh, so that you can cut the supply of uh, and the fuel to the danger zone. Now, let us have a look at what happens to a vapor cloud. 
Now, uh, simultaneously, you can have a look of this uh, particular diagram. The cloud spreads from too rich through a flammable range to a too lean that is subjected to the availability of air. So, first hand uh, edges start to burn through the deflagration, steady state combustion and enough vapor is being uh, uh, generated and enough heat is being liberated. Now, this cloud disperses through a natural convection because of heat generation, the density difference took usually takes place and this density difference lead to the natural convection of this dispersion. Now, flame velocity will increase with the containment and turbulence. Now, if velocity is high enough, cloud will detonate like this. So, the cloud will burst just like anything. Now, if cloud is small enough with a little confinement, then it cannot explode. The reason is that you will be able, to, you will be in a position to control it. So, in this uh, particular module, we have discussed the various uh, classification streams of uh, explosion and we have taken three special cases, vapor cloud explosion, Blevy and dust explosion and we have discussed the vapor cloud explosion. Thank you very much.